Wow, what an amazing video. Good morning, dear participants. City Labs Connected. We are live from the studio in St. Petersburg. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining our C3D Software Development Conference. Uh, today, so. we are going to conduct our conference dedicated to the development of engineering applications using special program components. Today, there are two of us leading the conference, my colleague Ekaterina. And my colleague Artyom. Yeah. Today, we hosted this conference, and other speakers will tell you about all the experience around the, our Citrix Toolkit product. You will see our developers and also representatives of our customers who will share their experience of how they use our components. Among them uh, will be Ledis Company, Eagleware, Renga Software, and Terra Analysis. We will meet them all later. So, before we start the main part of the conference, I'd like to add some important information about this toolkit. First of all, it is not an end user application. It is a library for developers of engineering software. It consists of five, four main modules that allow you to get the most necessary functionality to your application. So, here are them all. Geometric kernel, C3D modeler, parametric engine, 3D solver, exchange module, 3D converter, and realization component, 3D vision. Also, we have recently developed other three components providing additional functionality. First of all, it is B-Shaper, designed to convert polygonal models to B-Rep ones. The next one is 3D Fair Curve Modeler, constructing class F curves and surfaces. And the final one is C3D Web Vision. I think you already guessed why it's called so. Now you can develop your uh, web application with this module. So we can talk about the toolkit for long hours, but I think my colleagues will be disappointed if I don't give them flow and an ability to tell about on their own. So they will tell you about each component in details right after us. So finally, we tell you about three new modules and then about four main ones. Okay, and some whole information, our event will take approximately two and a half hours. You're welcome to write down your questions in the comments section, and you will get answered directly from our developers. And of course, uh, award uh, for the best question, the best questions will be awarded by the book Geometric Modeling, signed by the author Nikolai Golovanov. Okay, Katya, thank you for this. So let's move to the main part. Now we're going to tell you how we handle it for the last two years during the pandemic, what impact does it have on us, and uh, what is totally new in our company. So meet Oleg Zikov, CEO of City Labs. Hello, friends. Uh, before we start to talk about technologies, let me speak about our company and what's new in c 3 uh, this year. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a little bit uh, about our company. c 3 is a part of Ascon Group, uh, who is the biggest CAD, IC, and PDM developer uh, here in Russia. We started to develop 3D, 3D kernel in 1995, uh, 26 years ago, and uh, uh, nine, years, uh, nine years ago we uh, made it available for all developers uh, in the world. Uh, today we have 30 staff on board, seven of them are PhD, and we are working from three locations here in uh, Russia. Uh, the pandemic has changed a lot in our life and work, but uh, it did not slow down our development. We work exactly according to our roadmaps. For two years, nine new employees came to uh, our company, uh, not counting all the cats and dogs that helped us to code uh, remotely, of course. Uh, we opened a, a new DevOps department, which took over all development operations, including toolkit wrappers and product delivery. And we have launched two new projects, which result will be presented by my colleagues uh, right after me. Uh, as a demonstration of our work, please uh, look at the number of solved uh, user requests. It's over 1,300 two years in a row. And there are very different requests. Some were solved just in an hour, uh, and some took several weeks of work. 
And uh, in this difficult time, we are very grateful to all our customers who have renewed or even expanded their C3D licenses. Uh, thank you. Uh, you um, uh, thanks to uh, you, our business was growing at a good pace uh, last year. Uh, today, more than 40 companies in 14 countries around the world develop their engineering software based on our programming components. These are very different companies, uh, world leaders such, such as Altium, PCB design software developer from US, or Artec 3D, developer of 3D scanners from Europe, or small local developers. But everyone, everyone is very important for us. Nothing pleases the kernel developers more than the release of a new customer products. And let's see what Cifredi-based software has launched over the past year. First of them is APM Studio. This is a preprocessor for computer-aided engineering system APM Win Machine. Cifredi replaced in-house kernel in this product. Next is a NanoCut Pro DWG-based software that used ACES kernel before. In this product, you can see integration of a C3D toolkit and ODA drawings SDK from Open Design Alliance. Next new product is a Pilot Beam. Uh, this is a beam data management software. They use C3D modeler to build 3D geometry from IFC files and uh, our new C3D B shaper to convert polygonal models to BREP. It helps them uh, to simplify uh, beam uh, models, big beam models. Next product is a quick field from Terra Analysis. This is another example of C3D implementation in computer-aided design, uh, computer-aided engineering software. Later, you can hear their case about uh, their work. Next product is LCMS. LCMS is a lean construction management system from FreeV uh, Service. Uh, this is a software responsible for the preparation and optimization of construction works. They use C3D Vision for 3D model visualization. Another interesting customer is a VR Concept. This is a startup who provide VR tools for manufacturing and construction industries. They use C3D Converter and have plans to use Modeler for some simple modeling comparison directly in a VR. This is a very, very interesting thing. Uh, a lot of beam here today. Yes, this industry grows very fast. And you can see Saip company from Spain. Uh, they decide to use C3D kernel in a wide range of their own software like SIP architecture. You can see it on a screen. Next one is the Elikasoft company from Sweden who launched first release of Staircon product based on C3D modeler. Staircon is a software for stair design and production. And last, but uh, for today, uh, this is a flagship product of our parent company, Ascon, new version of a mechanical CAD Compass 3D V20 with a lot of new features from C3D Modula 2021. So this is what our users are doing right now. Thanks again to everyone who entrusts us with the geometric modeling in their software. But what can you develop with a C3D tomorrow? Let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Alec, for your brilliant presentation. It's always nice to uh, hear and understand the whole picture of the business and how everything works. Our next speaker is special guest. He's professor of Kemen University in South Korea, Rushan Zaydinov and he will tell about our new model, Fair Curve Modeler. Now I invite uh, Roshan to join us. Please begin. I am Professor Roshan Ziadinov at Kemian University in South Korea. And I will present a topic entitled Class F Curve Modeling in C3D Fair Curve Modeler. 
First of all, C3D FAIR curve modeler is a library for smooth FAIR uh, curve modeling that extends the surface modeling capabilities of the C3D modeler geometry kernel. It's implemented as a whole new part of the C3D modeler geometry kernel. Besides generating high quality curves in terms of fairness, its algorithms ensure the following advantages such as flexibility, uh, sustainable shape generation or isogeometry, suitable for isogeometric approximation of analytical curves that preserve their basic features, invariance other affine and projective transformations, as well as a wide range of applicable tools. So what is a smoothness? This definition is related to a smooth function. A smooth function is one with continuous derivatives up to a certain order over a given domain. So over a given the interval from A to B, a function can be considered to be smooth. The number of continuous derivatives required for a function to be deemed smooth varies from two to infinite, depending on the task at hand. Smoothness is a property of a function or a curve or surface, indicating that this function can be differentiated or that each point of the given curve or surface has surroundings that can be defined using differentiable functions. Different types of design uh, use splines of different orders of smoothness. For example, when designing road routes, clotoid splines are used and smoothness of at least the second order is ensured. For profiling the camshaft cam of high-speed engines, smoothness of at least the third order is required. Therefore, the profile design begins with drawing a smooth graph of the third order derivative. To ensure continuity of the torsion function when modeling space curves, the curve must have third order of smoothness. A space curve with smooth torsion should have fourth order smoothness, which follows from the analysis of the spatial curvilinear trajectory of the point particle. Only spline curves of the fifth degree or higher, at least fourth order of smoothness, provide a smooth change in torsion and can be used to model functional curves. A surface can be drawn from a network of plane curves. Therefore, planar or space curves in the curve network must also have a smoothness order of four or higher. Based on the analysis of point particle motion along a curve path, requirements for the quality of functional curves are proposed. They are listed here. A high order of smoothness, a minimum number of curvature extreme, minimization of the maximum value of curvature and its variation rate, minimization of the potential uh, energy of the curve, and aesthetic analysis from the standpoint of the laws of technical aesthetics. We do not set ourselves the task of giving a simple and precise mathematical definition of such curves. On the contrary, this category can include various curves that meet certain quality criteria. The refinement in addition of which is possible in the near future. Engineering practice shows that quality criteria can change over time, which does not diminish the need to develop multi-criteria methods for assessing the quality of geometrical shapes. Based on the above, class F curves have strict requirements for fairness criteria. This is precisely how they differ from class A curves. Why our approach is totally different from other existing approaches. The aesthetic attractiveness of industrial products is critical to their market, market success. Curves in industrial design must meet aesthetic standards since the characteristic lines of an industrial product are particularly significant for its aesthetic uh, impact. Polynomial or rational parametric splines are used to create the 
majority of curves and surfaces in traditional CAT systems. However, for highly aesthetic criteria, certain curves and surfaces, such as NURPS, are insufficient. One of the problems here is that controlling the curvature is uh, challenging. Unlike many other works where authors are usually focused on one or two quality criteria, we offer a multi-criteria approach to the assessment of the shape quality of curves that constitute component parts of the surfaces used for uh, the modeling of object shapes in various types of design. Techniques for class F curve modeling include the following. First, generation of the Hermite data and determination of inflection points. Second, breakdown of the curve into separate locally convex areas. Third, creation of uh, virtual curves or V curves. And the fourth one is an isogeometric approximation of virtual curves. The math behind C3D fear curve modeler is based on parameterization. With it, we generalize the concept of the spline as a set of curves having equal geometric parameters at arbitrary points of the, of the base polyline. In conventional splines, the parameters of the curves are equal only at the splines segment junctions. The first innovation is that the basis of spline definition is a set of double osculating conic curves on a locally convex base polyline. The edges on curves form a lens on the polyline segment they share. The spline tension is characterized as the deviation of the adjacent analytic curves of the basis spline. It can be easily assessed visually by the size of the lens between the two adjacent curves. The second innovation is the algorithm that generates the virtual curve or V curve on the basis of a spline constructed with a discrete set of double osculating conic curves. We developed the V curve method with some notable features such as so uh, the first one is it offers the lowest number of curvature extreme values. The second, it exhibits duality because the V-curve can be defined both with base vertices and tangents, just like conic curves. The third, it has a fine invariance. The fourth one is it presents low sensitivity to the vertex distribution along the curve. And the last one is the curve vertices that are generated in the lens area reduce the tension of the resulting spline. Then we redefined a set of double osculating conic curves on the set of, of the generated vertices. A sequence of these operations at the limit defines a C5 class virtual curve. These features enable geometrically accurate modeling of uh, conic curves. The third innovation is an isogeometric approximation of a virtual curve with a non-uniform rational Bezier spline. It's a method for isogeometric NURBS curve generation. A geometrical algorithm consists of a series of simple operation, operations as follows. First, Double osculating conic curves on a shared segment of the base polyline are considered as second degree uh, Bezier curves with two segment B uh, polygons. Then we apply uh, actually a degree elevation of a Bezier curve by using a three segment B polygons. The next, the third one is uh, the resulting B polygon is generated by averaging the initial B polygons. The middle segment of the resulting B polygon is parallel to the initial segments and is at an equal distance to them. Since the average of B polygon is also convex, just like the initial B polygons, strict isogeometry is preserved. 
The fourth innovation is, is the isogeometric approximation of a virtual curve with a B-spline curve. The key concept here is the rejection of conventional approaches when the vertices of the base polyline should coincide with spline nodes. A spline should pass through the vertices of the base polyline, but spline nodes or any spline points with fixed parameters do not coincide with the base polyline vertices. The algorithm is heuristic and is similar to manual editing of S polygons. Initial tangents at V curve points are used and tangent intersections are the S polygons vertices. In the current iteration, the point to spline distances are estimated on the S polygon. To minimize errors, a tangent is shifted parallel to itself by the error value. Then the iteration is repeated, making the proposed isogeometric approximation algorithm a heuristic geometrical procedure. The next question arises, so why class F curves, but not class A curves? In the given pictures, a generated B-spline curve from the given set of points on a circle by using Siemens NX software and C3D fair curve modeler illustrates the difference between class A and class F curves. As it can be seen from this example, class A curves do not provide a desired performance. On a uniform grid, we can create a virtual curve and approximate it with a B-spline curve of degree eight. The option to synchronize or harmonize the distribution of points on the virtual curve is used while designing a virtual curve. In this case, a radial runout error is six times 10 to the power of minus seven. So it's a very small error value. Modeling a B-spline surface in C3D fair curve modeler starts with a set of polylines. A high quality of a surface is ensured by the construction of virtual forming and directing curves of the surface. In this example, the vertices of the polylines belong to a torus. The right picture shows an image of two aligned surfaces, the torus and a B-spline surface. The proposed method has a wide range of applications. The applications of class F curves and surfaces are shown below. These include tillage improvements, aerodynamic profiles, external surfaces of aircrafts, ships, cars, profiles of compressor and turbine blades and propellers. On this slide, you can see a model of a steam turbine blade profile. Instead of a local spline represented by circular arcs, we use a virtual curve constructed on a tangent polyline. This model was tested in the Compass Flow simulation software. Our comparative tests show improvements of the average exit speed and a total outlet pressure, 1% and 3% respectively as shown here. C3D fair curve modeler is also a good choice if there is an interest in designing aesthetic shapes. Due to unique methods of approximating analytical curves, we can easily import so-called logoesthetic curve into our projects. It's important to note that a wide class of fair curves can be generated by using super spirals shown on the figure, which are curves of monotonic curvature function defined in terms of Gauss hypergeometric functions. The main work on super spirals was published in a famous computer-aided geometric design journal. Moreover, C3D fair curve modeler integrates unique methods for constructing composite curves up to the ninth degree of smoothness. So it can be applied to constructing transition curves. 
we can also generate monotonic curvature curves from two given points and tangent directions in these points. Please try class F curves. Among other advantages, they are mathematically beautiful. At this point, I would like to finalize my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor, for your beautiful story, and thank you for your contribution in C3D Fair Curve Modeler. Dear participants, don't forget about the questions. You can ask them in our comments section. Uh, it's amazing when science meets the technology. And now I want to give word to my colleague Artem Maximenko, our product manager, and he will tell you about our newest model, C3D Web Modeler. Okay, I think I may start. So I'm going to introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Artem Oksmenko, and I'm a product manager of Theta Day Labs. For the last year, we have been working on a new solution called Theta Day Web Vision. In my presentation, I will focus on two major issues, why we started working on this solution and what we want to achieve in the end. Also, I want to add that this solution is a brand new one for us, so let me tell you about its features. I will start with the feeling you on the background, how a beginner develop 3D web vision. But before I start, I would like to give you an overview of the difference between a couple of our existing products, 3D vision and 3D viewer. Our new users often think that they are the same products and don't see the distinction, but I can say that they do a mistake. So, 3D Vision is a cross-platform graphical library which is included in 3D Toolkit. The main purpose of 3D Vision is rendering of a graphic scene and any models on it. I would like to emphasize it is a low-level solution because you have got total management of all graphics representation of your loaded model. You can even edit every aspect of a model. For the user interaction, we provide useful programming interface on C++, which gives you total control. Meanwhile, 3D Viewer is a desktop window application which shows all the features of 3D Vision in one place. Now you can see a scheme that gives you a last fast presentation of what Viewer consists of. So graphics user interface is created with Qt framework to provide the main functionality of viewing models. This app uses some of the toolkit components. One of them is Modella for generating meshes and Converter for converting supported formats to the application. And now I want you to think about the significance of the vision component here. Of course, it is used for render generated meshes there. Also, I'd like to mention that CTD Labs provides CTD Viewer in two versions, free and pro ones. The later has some interesting features. Uh, there are four things to consider. Possibility for importing of models and any supported formats, and also exporting PMI and ActiveX API. ActiveX API allows you to build graphics window or theta the viewer into your application. Compared to Vision API, the API of ActiveX requires less user actions for embedding, but provides fewer features. For example, the graphical scene is generated every time when you load your 3D model. Talking about ActiveX, I would like to answer the question, who uses this viewer ActiveX today and how it looks like? As you can see, one of our customers is a SCON company. They involved FTX for one of their products that is called Launchman PLM. Viewer benefits for them for displaying digital assemblies developed in CAD system called Compass 3D. All other things Launchman PLM creates by itself. And now we finally got the main purpose of this presentation, C3D Web Vision. Most of our customers who firstly meet the viewer are interested in a web solution of this product. We always have a prepared answer. This question that we do not provide a complete web solution for building into. Although our components can be used for developing a web application. 
This leads us to the next question. How can we provide them with a new approach for visualizing models in the web browser? A year ago, we started the development of 30-day web vision product. Now, let me introduce you our 30-day web vision and its opportunities for now. You will see a lot of short videos demonstrating them. Here you can see how our web solution loads model. If you take a fast look at this, you can notice that elements of model are being loaded consistently. It is also called lazy loading. The next video shows how we can manipulate model on the scene in web. We can perform such processes to the model as painting it, rotating it in various directions, zooming it, zooming out, and so on. So let's see the video more in more details. Yeah, here we go. Use panning process. And then it's animated thing. So go ahead. In this video, we can see how to control visibility of objects using a construction tree. By clicking on items in the tree, we enable and disable visibility of associated objects in the scene. Also, we can fit any objects in a graphic view. Here we can see how it goes. And last video shows how we can switch different views of the scene or switch rendering modes of the model. OK, stop playing video. Thank you. Now let me show you a scheme that reflects the structure of our web component. It is a complete web-based solution for visualizing 3D models similar to API of 3D Viewer ActiveX. 3D Viewer goes as a framework for this structure, so there are the same components which are included into the stop viewer. To use 3D Vision com components in an opportunities in a browser, we build it code base with Inscripton tool. It results in two files with names 3D Vision JS and 3D Vision Vasm presented in a scheme. To, to display our solution on the server side, we decided to focus on a microservice architecture. And that is why we have been developing 3D service, which combine uh, all the works uh, doing them by model, modular and converter components. These geometric data structures are transferred through our own protocol to avoid conflicts with the other data. The service has REST API for model management. Let's take another look at the scheme for a little bit. OK, let's go next. You can easily generate server, stops, and client SDKs for different programming languages, as our API is defined with OpenAPI service, formerly known as the Swagger. The client side is a TypeScript API that adds into HTML user page and covers element. Uh, There's the channel between the client and server sites designed for transferring visualization data. So let's now take a look at the requirements. Developing web vision, uh, we tend to, to support uh, three popular web browsers, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox. We, we tend to involve modern technologies. So in the future, we plan to support features highlighted with red color. Minimum versions that support required API are presented in the table. Supported ones for now are highlighted with green color. For now, we are actively, uh, actively sorry, moving all the desktop features and code base to the web platform. In addition to this, I would like to say that uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Here you can see all features uh, that are already implemented in our web solution and available for use. You can could see them demonstrated earlier in my presentation when I showed you those videos. We would like to make a number of improvements to the vision component to work with the via the browser. Our plans are divided on two parts, the client side, where the user see the model, and the server one. On the client, we plan to implement features that are presented now in the slide on the left side. And the server, we want to implement the features from the right side. Now you can read these features. 
Okay, uh, so thank you for uh, my for your attention, and I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you, Artyom, for your presentation, and thank you, Vision Team, for great work. What a progress in one year. Very nice. Yeah, so I think we can move next step of our, of our conference. And now I'm going to invite our colleague uh, that will tell us about our new uh, component, C3DB Shaper. Uh, my colleague is Andrzej Tumanin. Uh, C3DB Shaper Team Lead. So please come to us. Hello, everyone, uh, dear colleagues. My name is Andrei Tumanin, and now I'd like to tell you about C3DB Shaper. C3DB Shaper uh, is responsible for converting from the polygonal into boundary representation. I will first provide a short uh, review of this module. Uh, as most other geometric kernels, C3D kernel uses a boundary representation, also called BREP, as a primary representation of modeled objects. Using a triangulation algorithm based on a model's boundary representation, it is relatively easy to build a polygonal representation of the model for its visualization and geometry calculations. Uh, the reverse transformation uh, from the polygonal representation to BREP is more problematic. For this purpose, we developed the C3D B-Shaper module. There is a lot of 3D data in polygonal representation. I divide the sources uh, of polygonal data into three major groups. First of all, there are online catalogs and databases like 3D Warehouse, Cold 3 d and so on, offer 3D models in polygonal formats like STL, VRML, and OBG. Uh, the second group are files that result uh, from 3D scanning. And the uh, third group contains the result of finite element analysis, which are uh, deformed meshes or results of topology optimization design. We suggest uh, to use C3DB Shaper in following cases. Uh, to optimize uh, the visualization of polygonal mesh models, to obtain planar projections of polygonal mesh models, uh, and to reconstruct some surfaces from an initial polygonal mesh, and final to general reverse, uh, reverse engineering purpose. Uh, some words about how C3D Shaper works. Uh, the overall process of converting a polygonal mesh to BREP implemented in C3D Shaper is consists of three main stages. Uh, segmentation groups the original mesh polygons into subsets, after that, uh, reconstruction of surfaces is performed, and finally, BREP shell is constructed. Consider in more details this stage of polygonal mesh to BREP transformation. Uh, the first order segmentation, which is based on normal vectors, provides an initial subdivision of the mesh and detects sharp edges, as well as flat or highly curved areas. The second order segmentation analyzes the mesh according to the principal curvatures, which provides a, provides a sufficient basis for classifying a simple algebraic surfaces. The next stage is surface reconstruction. Each of the segments must be associated with a surface, approximating its form with a given precision. First of all, the principal curvature values uh, of the segments are used to uh, define if it is possible to describe the segment form uh, by an elementary surface, like plane, cylinder, etc. Uh, after that, if none of above surfaces can be used to describe the segment, a NURB surface uh, will be created for it. At present time, C3DB Shaper can reconstruct surfaces of following types. Plane, cylinder, corner, sphere, toes, revolution surface, and nerve surface. In figure, recognized surfaces have their own colors. Planes blue, 
Cylinders red, spheres green, corner yellow, toroids violet. Uh, and final stage of the transformation is constructing BREP model. Based on segmented regions with fitted surfaces, uh, uh, region adjacent graph is built. This graph reflects uh, the complete topology and serves as the basis of, for building the final BREP model. There are two main models of C3D B-Shaper, a fully automatic mode and interactive. Interactive or semi-automatic mode is uh, more preferred for processing complex polygonal models, such as scanning data. And this mode uh, certainly required high user experience. Uh, the reconstructed surfaces and their associated directions and taxes, if um, any, must obey various rules, such as being tangential, symmetric, concentric, and so on. Due to the noise of polygonal mesh and the numerical nature of the surface fitting algorithm, such least square fitting, we may obtain inaccurate surfaces and poor BREP models. Sometimes we can disregard the topological connectivity of uh, the resulting shell as well as its overall correctness. This simplified approach uh, uh, in the first place is suitable for case of visualization. The main idea, if a surface surface interaction calculation will not be robust, uh, B-Shaper will create a boundary edge by corresponding segment edge. Another more complicated approach is based on constrained fitting. Assume that after some surface fitting, various engineering constraints are detected. We are trying to recognize most likely constraints using the initial parameters of fitted surfaces. Bishaper select the groups of the relevant surfaces that are likely to comprise a set of parallel orthogonal entities, share common axes and directions, and so on. Constraints uh, are then enforced as a, as a post process by changing the values of the surface parameters. All these problems are converted into solving a large system of nonlinear algebraic equations. This option is under development right now. Next, I will present the current possibilities for converting polygonal to boundary representation using C3D B-Shaper. The first example is a polygonal mesh of the lifter vehicle. The source mesh consists from more than uh, 15,000 polygons, um, which are transformed to 340 BREP uh, faces. Next example, you can see a more impressive result, more than 21,000 uh, polygons transformed into a model with uh, 740 faces. Uh, large engineering model, C3D B-Shaper also demonstrates a good result for this model. So, some of the things we are also working on include advancing the automatic segmentation algorithm, improving the construction of free-form nerves surfaces. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Andre, for the presentation. Beshaper is quite new module, so now Andre will go and join the charts. If you have any questions, please ask Andre. And now we have C3D Toolkit Award part, and for this, I'm going to invite our CEO, Alek Zikov. Alek, please come. Yeah, but before we invite Alek, uh, I'd like to say about uh, how many countries uh, are watching us now. So in our comments, uh, we can see USA, Canada, Turkey, France, Italy, Singapore, South Korea, Russia, and Germany. So we are very glad to see so lot of us watching us and uh, uh, enjoy. Now I invite Oleg Zikov. Yeah. Hello again. Uh, every year we select and reward C3D users who have contributed the most to its development. How do we choose them? 
First of all, we look at how many requests uh, were made in service desk by our customers. After that, we look at the complexity of these requests. Another important criteria is the integrated development of C3D into new areas. We were weak or did not work at all. And finally, there is a subjective factor in our choice. Sorry for that. Uh, who has won in our ceremony before? There were different companies like Beam Developer, Renga Software from Russia, Mechanical CAD Experts, Mubitech from Turkey, uh, Electrical Computer Aided Design Vendor, RMX, uh, KAI Developer, PASS, or Nanosoft Developer of DWG based software, Nanocad, and Leaders who is outsourced developer with their own products like Leaders Cloud, Portform, or Geometry Comparison Engine. And this year, our award is presented to Elika Soft Company from Sweden, the developer of a Staircon, Staircon Cut. Applause, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for outstanding, outstanding contribution to C3D Toolkit development. You really help us to move forward. Unfortunately, we cannot give you our gift in person. Yeah, uh, so please wait for the special parcel from our developers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elikasoft. Well, we have finalized our main part with the great awards to our users. And now we can go ahead, move to our main part, uh, when we will talk about our main modules. So the first one is uh, Yuri Kazulin, our Citadel Modeler team lead. And he will talk about our Citadel Modeler, what's new and approved tools uh, were implemented. So. Good day, colleagues. My name is Yuri. I'm team lead of the CTD <laughs> Modeler team. I want to tell you about new features and some improvements in our modeling model of the CTD kernel. Uh, before telling you about uh, new and improved tools, I'd like to remind you what Modeler is. For some of you, this information might be new. Uh, modeler model allow you to construct a geometric model, edit as a geometric model by changing its internal data, uh, make triangulation, calculate inertial properties of the model, uh, build a flat projection of this model, and detect collisions of model elements. Um, Modeler provides the following service for the geometric model. Description of the shape of the modeled uh, objects, uh, description uh, of relation between geometric model elements, uh, support of model construction history, uh, and support of attributes of geometric model elements. Mm. A modeler uses uh, boundary representation and polygonal representation to describe uh, the shape of the objects. Uh, this component provides functionality of different modeling types. First of all, solid modeling. Uh, modeler helps construct solid bodies using BREP and supports different methods for editing these bodies. Uh, surface modeling. Uh, this model can build uh, surfaces of various shapes. Sheet metal modeling functionality is used to construct sheet metal bodies. Wireframe evidently is used to construct wireframe object. And the last one is uh, direct modeling. Uh, modeler constructs polygonal model based on its boundary representation. A polygonal model is constructed by triangulating geometric model elements. It's used for visualization and calculations. Uh, in addition, Modeler calculates inertial properties of the geometric model, uh, maps uh, flat projection of uh, this model, and detects collision of model elements. According to the subject of improvements and novelties, uh, they can be divided into several parts. 
The first section is devoted to surface modeling. The second part is sheet metal modeling. And the third section contains direct modeling and some different features. Uh, there are the next new features and improvements in surface modeling. Significant change in changes were occurred in construction of uh, section surface shell, uh, surface from mesh of curves, patch shell, uh, faces extension, median shell, and smoothly joining faces union. Uh, the conical section surface was first announced last year. The separation is now out of the development stage. Uh, it, uh, it's ideally can be called a variable cross-section surface. Uh, in this surface, the forming curve moves along the supporting curves on which it rests uh, with uh, the potential possibility of changing its shape along the guides. We recommend to try this surface. That's uh, all that concerns section surface. And next uh, is uh, surface from mesh of curves. Uh, you can now confidently use compound curve-like contours. And of course, you can set up conjugation conditions for such compound boundaries. Uh, now, uh, the surf this surface uh, can surely add the missing reference curves and build automatic chains of reference curves. And uh, one important point, surfaces from the mesh of curves now, uh, can now provide a smooth mating up to second derivatives, or it's called uh, G2 between their neighboring pitches and neighboring surfaces along own outer boundaries. In the patch operation, it's now possible to set up uh, mates also on its boundaries. It's possible to build a patch shell on the base of inaccurate reference curves. In some complex cases, patch shell is now constructed on the basis of several phases instead of refusing to build. Uh, the operation of extending the shell boundary phases along the edges has been improved. Uh, now it's almost always possible to select multiple edges to extend a phase. Uh, now you can automatically remove the nicks at uh, junction of the longitudinal edges of the elongated faces. What concerns median shell? The automatic cutting and extension of the bounds of the shell being constructed was improved. In addition to, it's now possible to fill the faces attributes with information about the thicknesses. Over the past year, uh, the operation of merging faces uh, the, with smooth joining along the edge has been multiple refined. Uh, in this operation, pairs of surfaces uh, transformed into a spline representation and there are a single spline surface formed from them. So next, uh, let's move to sheet metal operations. Uh, the following new features and enhancements can be listed in the sheet metal operation. Uh, there are sheet metal body recognition, conversion, arbitrary body stamping and uh, folding and unfolding refinement in sweat flanges. Now the functionality for recognizing of sheet metal solid has been added. Uh, we guess it will be useful feature when uh, you're working with imported sheet metal solids from other CAD systems. Uh, the operation of converting an ordinary body into a body made of sheet material also appeared. When converting, you can select the thicknesses of the sheet in the result sheet body. Uh, its fault areas uh, also formed. In a sheet metal operation, you can use surely stamping with a tool solid. Uh, as if it were performed using a die or a punch. Last year, this operation was just announced at the initial stage of development. Uh, what concerns Dirk modeling? D during the past 
period, improvements of to direct modeling in terms of its reliability was regularly carried out. In many operations, uh, the management of uh, merger phases and edges appeared uh, as requested by several of our customers. For example, in solid union operation, offsetting shell operation, uh, and sweep, swept operations. In phases splitting operation, uh, the edges of split phases and cutter solid are uh, used also as regular edges uh, of such cutter solid. Uh, and in direct uh, modeling operation, uh, the removing phases methods has been improved while maintaining the integrity of the closed shell, both uh, for regular phase and phases and phases uh, that have got a biofilleting operation. The method of moving phases uh, has also been improved in direct modeling. Uh, that's all about um, direct modeling. The next feature are not grouped uh, in some section. What concerns Boolean operation? Uh, this operation has been improved in terms of performance. The optimization of the facial loops construction has been carried out. Uh, in cases of a uh, large number of edges and loops. In the intersection curve operation, cutting and merging uh, settings were added. It can be useful in case of periodical, so periodical surfaces intersection. And uh, now an exact edges repair is available as uh, one external function and as additional processing inside operation. Uh, we think it can fix problems with uh, operation rejects. Uh, that's probably all I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, right uh, question in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri, for presentation telling about C3D modeler and uh, new features and new and also improvements. As Yuri has said, he's waiting you in chat and he's ready to answer on all your questions. And now our next speaker is Terra Analysis Company, who are our user, represented by Alexander Lubimtsev. Now I invite Alexander to join us. Hello, my name is Alex. I work in Quickfield support team. Quickfield is a simulation software distributed by the Terra Analysis Limited. Headquarters are located in Svenborg, Denmark, and we have a distribution office in Toronto, Canada. Today, I would like to speak about how C3D Kernel helped Quickfield to become a powerful 3D electric analysis tool. Quickfield is a simulation software, and we have DC, AC, and transient magnetic and electric analysis packages. We have steady state heat transfer and transient heat transfer packages. And we have a linear stress analysis package. These applications are covered by the list of analysis packages. Mostly Quickfield is used for the electrical and magnetic simulation of electromagnetic devices, such as cables, transmission lines, electric motors, transformers, printed circuit boards, and many others. Thermal analysis models are used to build thermal models of electromagnetic devices and to calculate, for example, thermal transmittance of the building to insulation to simulate induction heating devices and others. As you see, the list of customers is very diverse. We have all major states and European industrial corporations, research centers, universities. And today I would like to speak about 
Naval Research Laboratory and their experience using quick field. Dr. Allen is our customer at Naval Research Laboratory. He has published more than 80 papers. He is a leading researcher at the plasma division of the Naval Research Laboratory. He started using quick field in 2001. They have ordered electrostatics and DC conduction models. Then later they ordered transient magnetics and heat transfer. They used Quickfield primary for simulation of the devices they used for plasma physics applications. Then in 2013, we released the first three-dimensional version of Quickfield, which was based on the free three-dimensional library. And Dr. Allen was one of our first customers who started using the dimension features of quick field. And it soon became obvious that the dimensional functionality is, is not sufficient. Main drawbacks were limitations of the single body topology import, insufficient mesh size, and unstable behavior of the three dimensional core. So we decided to replace the dimensional core. And after comprehensive research, we have chosen C3D kernel. It was a huge product and required a lot of reports. And we're thankful to C3D team for their technical assistance during the migration process. And finally, in 2019, we released the first version, which was based on the C3D kernel. It supported multi-body input from all major card system in step format. That time, Dr. Allen worked on the complicated project, which required three-dimensional electric analysis. And his work resulted in the publication where he refers to quick field as a useful tool to simulate electric field distribution and to design the electoral system. Courtesy of Dr. Allen and Naval Resource Laboratory, we are allowed you to demonstrate what exactly did they do in their project. This is the high voltage switch, and the switch consists of two groups of electrodes. The idea was to replace the conventional oil switch with the water switch. Comparing to the oil, water features very high dielectric primitivity and superior fire safety. The switch consists of two groups of electrodes, high voltage electrode and grounded electrode. The task was to calculate the electric field stress and to calculate the capacitance between the electrodes. So let's start quick field and I will show you how it was done. You see, this is quick field 6.4. It is based on the C3D toolkit. Here I create new project. Call it switch. Next. Problem type is electrostatics. Model class is the three-dimensional import. And here I will import the geometry model from the step file. Here it is. This is the outer body. Hide. This is the upstream body. Hide. This is the downstream body.
height, and this is the shielding disk. Okay. All these materials are conductors, so I do not specify any electrical primitivity value here. Instead, I will specify electric potential on the conductor spaces. Upstream. This is the upstream electrode, and the peak value of the electric potential is 4 megavolts. So this is phases has the label high voltage, and the high voltage potential is 4 megavolts. Okay. Unhide all. Hide. All these electrodes are grounded. So for these electrodes, I assign label zero and specify zero voltage. And we need to add the water to our model. Enable the ground region. This would be water. And for the water, I specify electric primitivity, which is 81. Now that's all. The geometry model is ready. All I need to do is to build the finite element mesh on edge, on faces, then to build the finite element mesh in volumes and run the analysis. That is that fast, thanks to C3D toolkit, well, it takes some minutes to run the analysis, so I'd better switch to the already simulated problem. Here you can see the electric potential distribution. And my task is to calculate the electric stress distribution between the electrodes. So I will use the cut by plane tool, switch on the two-dimensional cross-section window. Here I will adjust the field picture and switch on the electric field strength. Switch off the easy line plot and let's zoom in. Now here you can see the electric field stress distribution in space between the electrodes. You can find the exact values by clicking any point, get the potential value, get the electric field strength. You can use the contour tool, draw the line and get the field distribution along this line on the XY plot or in the table. Again, here you can get the coordinates, potential electric field strength. That was one task. Another task was to calculate the capacitance. Okay. Close this window, close this window. I will hide the water block. Now you can see the electrode system. To calculate the capacitance, I need to find the charge. That's easy. I select upstream body, follow to the integrals, and this is the electric charge. If I divide the charge by the potential difference, I will get the capacitance. That is how it is done in quick field. As you see, it is indeed a complicated device that requires three-dimensional analysis. And thanks to c 3 Toolkit, QuickField has become a reliable tool used by leading researchers to perform electric analysis simulation. Now I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Alexander. I think it was...
perfect, brilliant, especially the video in the end of the presentation. Uh, because it's very pleased for us to see how our components are used in a real application. So I think my colleague Katerina will agree with it. Completely. <laughs> yes. So uh, who will join us next? Uh, now we are going to tell you about our component CSD solver and uh, our colleague uh, CSD solver uh, team this developer will tell us about this. Yeah. Welcome. Hello, my name is Alexander and I'm a C3D Solver lead developer. I will present you new features of C3D Solver. But first of all, I want to give a brief preview of C3D Solver capabilities and talk a little about engineering tasks in which the use of C3D Solver can be helpful. First task is a two-dimensional two parametric sketching. C3D Solver gives, gives an opportunity to put a different logical and dimensional constraints on two-dimensional curves and do degrees of freedom analysis. Also, it provides powerful drag and drop and logging functional. In addition, we provide a JavaScript wrapper of two-dimensional solar that almost completely covers its functionality. Next task is a composition of three-dimensional solids in assembly. C3D Solver provides a wide choice of logical and dimensional constraints to make a different types of, so of solid bodies. It provides degrees of freedom analysis, logging, and drag and drop capabilities as well as two-dimensional solver. Another one important task in three-dimensional case is constructing of pipelines and wireframes. Three-dimensional solver provides functionality to create line segments with variable length, a circular arc with variable length and radius, and binding them by logical and dimensional constraints. Degrees of freedom analysis, drag and drop, and logging are supported for this subject area too. Now, let's talk about new features of each C3D solver component. When modeling assembly structures, elements that need to be multiplied according to some law are found in almost every model. In CAT, they are called array components or patterns. The pattern, according to some law of copying, establishes the dependence of the array instance, instances on some initial element called the copying sample. Most often, patterns place copies of a, of a sample on a linear or concentric grid. Positioning pattern, pattern instances according to a pattern law is a simple task for which it's, it's not necessary to use a solver, but as soon as one of the array instances is, in, is involved in the system of constraints, it becomes the subject of the solver cal calculations. Its position can be collectively determined by both the pattern positioning law and the rest of the assembly constraints. There are three functions in the solver API to organize the component arrays. Each time when a pattern is declared, the solver creates an auxiliary local coordinate system inside the constraint system. Its position and orientation is selected in the most convenient way for positioning pattern instances. For example, in the case of rotational pattern, the z-axis of the local coordinate system coincides with the rotational, rotation axis. Pattern Pattern constraints are unidirectional in the sense that the sample element is primary and the copy of and the copy that comes from its from it is secondary. Pattern instances are dependent objects. Despite this, the inverse problem is also solved for most patterns. It means that by acting on a pattern instance, you can change the position of the sample object. For example, the position of the sample object can be calculated from the copy given position. Previously, the solver supported this bidirectional dependency for linear patterns only. In the new version, we have improved the rotational pattern, and now the bidirectionality has worked for rotational patterns as well. Also, we have added a new type of pattern in the new version. We called it coordinate system pattern. 
This type of pattern allows copies to be positioned in three-dimensional space using only the one sample object. At the moment, using this pattern, you can define a cylindrical pattern. In this pattern, the position of the copy is defined not only by azimuthal deviation as in the rotational pattern, but also by deviations in the radial direction and in the height direction along the axis of rotation. This slide briefly lists other important internal improvements of the three-dimensional solver in included in the new version. First, we improved the accuracy of smooth connection of circles, so-called G1 connection. Second, we improved dragging of wireframes. It's now considered separately from dragging of solid bodies and has been significantly improved in accordance to the requirements of the domain area of wireframes. Third improvement is that the number of analytically solved problems have been increased has been increased. That has improved the performance of the solver. And another one important improvement is that the stability of numerical methods, methods has been increased as well. This has led no, not only to an increase of, in productivity, but also to an increase in the set of numerically solved problems in our library. Now let's move on to the updates in, to do, in the two-dimensional solver. First, we have implemented a new type of curves, an equidistant curve. We define equidistant curve as a set of points located at some distance, positive or negative, from some curve. The main purpose of equidistant functionality is supporting offset profiles in CAD CAM applications. To, cre to create equidistant curve and fix offsets of equidistant curves or make them equal, we have added three new functions to API which you can see on this slide. For all other constraint types, the old API functions that are using when putting constraints on the other curve types are compatible with equidistant curve. What, type, what types of constraints are currently supported for equidistant curves? First, it's incidence of a point and equidistant curve. Second, distance from a point to equidistant curve and distance from the equidistant curve to line, line segment, circle, and the other equidistant curve, fixation of an equidistant curve, and all constraints related to linear objects for equidistant curves based on linear objects. Soon, we will add support for, for all two-dimensional solver constraints for equidistant curves. Previously, in order to remove a control point from a spline, register it in the solver, or add a new one to it, it was necessary to remove spline from the solver together with all constraints imposed on it. And then add the already edited spline as a new curve and add again previously removed constraints. This no longer required. We, we have implemented spline editing functionality into, the, into dimensional solver. Two new functions are appeared in API that allow to remove control, control points from the spline and add the new ones. Another new functionality in the two-dimensional two solver is a curve symmetry. In previous versions, to apply symmetry to curves, our users had to apply symmetry to all control points of the curves and equate the characteristic scalars, for example, radius. This could often lead to the formation of an effective system of equations with redundancies. In the, in the new version, we have implemented symmetry for all types of solver curves. This makes it easier not only for the users to work with our library, but also for us to form a much more efficient system of equations without redundancies inside the solver. In addition to increasing functionality, we are working on expanding the use of the solver in various development environments. At the beginning of my talk, I said we support JavaScript interface. However, earlier it was compiled once a year with during annual release build of the C3D kernel. So both its functionality and the API locked behind the current version of the C3D library. 
In the new version, we have configured the automatic build of the JavaScript interface and synchronized it, its updates with the update cycles of the C3D kernel. In addition, we have added almost full featured support for the entire API of the two-dimensional solver. Also, WebAssembly version of JavaScript interface of the two-dimensional solver becomes available for our users. This slide shows an example of JavaScript code of the Solver library. As you can see, it's very similar to the native C++ code, so you can easily use our C++ docu documentation even for JavaScript development. But we think that only the JavaScript interface is not enough, and in the new version, we have implemented .NET interfaces for both two-dimensional and three-dimensional solvers with support of almost complete their functionality. Now, we're doing this wrapper only for Windows, but since we make a so-called p-invoke wrapper, then potentially, if customers are interested, we could build this wrapper for other operation systems. That's all, thank you for your attention. Alexander, thank you very much for your presentation, for telling us about new features and improvements, and also good news for our JavaScript users and C-sharp wrapper users. Our next speaker is uh, currently in our studio. Uh, this is representative of our user, Renga Software, and uh, represented by Bavel Anikin, who will tell about his experience with C3D Toolkit. Welcome, Pavel, and please come. <laughs> Hello, my name is Pavel Anikin. I'm a lead software engineer at Renga Software. Today, I'm going to talk about how we apply C2D Toolkit in our product called Renga. And I'd like to start by uh, saying a few words about what it is. Renga is a multidisciplinary building information modeling solution, featuring advanced tools for integrated design, broad collaboration capabilities, and an intuitive user interface. We have more than uh, 16,000 active users, not only in Russia, but worldwide. Under the hood, Ranger relies on C2D Toolkit. We, offer, uh, we uh, use three of its modules. Those are Modeler, Solver, and Converter. But it should be mentioned that we were experimented with B-Shaper 2, and the results look promising. Though we don't uh, use the Vision module, instead utilizing our own DirectX-based rendering engine, this may change in the future. Now I'm about to describe each of the usages you may see on the slide, starting with modeler and modeling itself. Most of our objects are modeled using either surface modeling or solid modeling. Objects like roofs, stairways, and ramps are initially tailored by our algorithms as surfaces. Certain objects uh, feature multi-layer materials, their layers may have non-zero thicknesses, like, for example, stucco on the wall. Surfaces come in handy to model that. We work with AFC files, where bodies might be described using sets of boundary representations, which we turn into C2D surfaces on or part. One of the features of Modeler is cutting solid bodies with surfaces. On uh, the slide, you may see uh, walls being cut by the lower surfaces of the roofs. Concerning solid modeling, we construct elementary, extrusion, evolution, and sweat bodies for our objects. Then we sometimes perform Boolean operations to cut holes in the walls and floors, connect our beams, and much, much more. One specific usage of a Boolean operation that's worth mentioning is uh, clash detection. Clashes occur when components that uh, make up a build asset are not spatially coordinated, when they either interfere or collide. These clashes may be extremely hard to spot by naked eye. To determine clashes and their volumes, we use an internal, an internal Renga plugin, which relies on Boolean intersections. Solid bodies are great, 
but being mathematical abstractions, they generally can't be visualized directly. Instead, they can be represented with triangulations, each of which approximates the boundary representation of an object with triangles. C3D model features delonate triangulation with adjustable density. We use triangulations for rendering and also to interact with the user's mouse input by means of ray tracing. Triangulations are essential for proper visualization, but they aren't enough. We also need projections. Modeler provides, us, provides means to calculate them. By composing projections with matrix operations, we achieve not only primary and isometric projections, but also more sophisticated ones like auxiliary and oblique projections, namely rank of features, diametric, cabinet, cavalier, and military projections. But the most essential projection type to us is perspective, because uh, the, most, uh, the most of the interactions uh, of the user with our model are performed mainly through perspective views. We project curves onto the screen plane to interact with the user's mouse. Well, cross-sections are important to us too. We cut bodies with planes to obtain flat regions that we can fill with hatch patterns. Modeler currently provides us with tools for calculating inertial characteristics of our objects. And specifically, we're interested in areas, masses, and volumes. We use them to fill schedules and drawing legends with the corresponding data. An example of both can be seen on the slide. The values can also be used for filtering, and they're accessible through our API. This slide concludes our usage of Modeler. Now let's talk about Solver. There are actually two of them in Situdi Toolkit, a two-dimensional solver and a three-dimensional solver. We use the former for profile-based objects. Rango features three types of such objects, namely beams, columns, and plates. In terms of geometry, they're essentially the same thing, a set of two-dimensional contours, or in our terms, as we call them, a profile. It's swept along a simple path to make a solid body. Renga has a number of predefined parametric profiles, but users are free to make their own. That's where a two-dimensional solver comes into play. After creating the contours, users can apply uh, geometric and dimensional constraints to them in order to specify the shape and size of the profile. Dimensional constraints define named parameters, which can be arbitrarily changed through the dialog shown on the slide. Solver makes it so the profile accommodates the changes, but still satisfies all the applied constraints. Let's take a closer look at the profile editor. Contours are defined by outlines and holes. The latter are subtracted from the former to make openings in the profile. Geometric and dimensional constraints that we use are listed on the slide. They are all provided and utilized by the two-dimensional solver. Now let's add the third dimension to see how we use the three-dimensional solver. As a multidisciplinary BIM solution, we offer tools for designing MEP. MEP stands for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. After MEP routes are traced, they can be manually edited by the user. That's where the three-dimensional solver does important work. It maintains connectivity and correctness of our routes during interactive editing. Solver performs the task by limiting available movements with constraints and then extending, shrinking, or bending growth signals as appropriate. Editing can be carried out by either moving, moving equipment or by changing routes themselves. In both cases, routes stay properly attached to the equipment. Well, last but probably not least, converter. There's not much to tell about C2D Converter. It works, and it does it well. Apart from C2D files themselves, we import most of what Converter provides, and some more. As of now, Converter doesn't support AFC and some of the mesh formats that we need, so we, so we, so we get them elsewhere. We export everything that's listed on the slide, except IGES and VRML, VRML. You can see here a small cottage. It was modeled in Renga, then exported to C2D. And it's shown in a free tool called C2D Viewer. Well, that is all I have for today. Thank you very much for your attention. And may the force of C2D Toolkit be with you.
Yeah, thank you, Pavel. It was a great overview on how <coughs> security components are used in your system, Renga. And we are very proud of you, uh, how you uh, apply our components in your Renga. Uh, great success to your team. And now let's continue our conference. I hope you hope had some rest, <laughs> now ready to continue. Yeah, now we can wake up. So uh, I'm looking through our comments now, and I can see a lot of questions. Thank you for the, those questions, and I can say uh, ask us more questions. Yes. Yes, and our next speaker is Converter Team Lead, Alexander Spivakov. He will tell you about uh, third-party products integration. Um, please, Alexander, join us. Come to the stage. Thank you. Uh, hello, colleagues. I'm Alexander Spivakov, the lead of the C3D Converter team. Now I'll present you what was happening to the C3D Converter for this year. But first, a couple of words about the C3D Converter itself. 3D Converters are usually associated with exchange formats, such as Open, for instance, Step or GT, or kernel formats developed by vendors, such as Paris Solid XT or ACSAT. And C3D Converter is not an exception here. It uses this and other formats, such as IGES, STL, VML, or ROBG, to provide exchange between different applications, as detailed as format allows. Shape of paths, st assembly structures, attributes, PMI can be read or written. And a new way of exchange was designed this year. It's related to one of mostly asked questions to us, another popular question. Do you support native formats such, of kinds, such as NX, Katia, SolidWorks, and others? Our typical answer looks something like that. You can license, license any toolkit yourself, and also yourself uh, provide data exchange with it using open forms. This way looks uh, too obvious and uh, not attractive for us. That's why we decided to make integration of that kind easier, using third-party components with the main direction of development, but not the only one. Support of option format was implemented in classical way in-house. And another traditional point of focus of us is quality of inputted models. What was, what was the work of in, on integration unusual for us? Hmm. This work is notable by following. Now we have to pay attention to the companies which our customers use, unlike before. On, an, on one hand, using these components for enhancing input must be as efficient as possible. And on the other, have no dependencies on subtleties of them. To satisfy these contradictory requirements, another exchange protocol was designed. By the way, a couple of words about the exchange standards. Let's have a look at different approaches to data exchange between applications. Let's suppose that application C needs to exchange data with applications A, B, and D. If the directory of, change, of exchange is chosen, the communication means need to take into account uh, details of data model of each application, the API, which versions, Using exchange uh, formats decrease the amount of work demanded for that exchange. If, if the, this way has another advantage, it doesn't depend on platforms which systems run. They, if, they can run on different platforms, such as Windows, Linux, and other. If the, the advantages of this approach uh, do not matter, for instance, uh, limitations of format or need to use file system, this way looks quite attractive. But let's suppose that A is not an application itself, but a toolkit, toolkit which provides quite good data exchange with systems B and D. Application C may consider it as a bridge to B and D. And in this case, using exchange formats between A and C becomes a bottleneck. And it's worth to think about direct data exchange, as was shown before. This idea lays in the plugin concept. On the application, based on C3D, using plugin looks so. First, load the plugin and maybe configure it, then read 3D model using almost the same API, and then finish work with the plugin. So the work on integration goes from the application's developers mostly to developers of plugin. 
The only thing C3D-based application must know is path to plugin. If more details tuning need needed, plugin-specific settings should be taken into account. The plugin must be a dynamic library, which implements API defined by HIDU from C3D developers. If the, all other details of its implementation depend on the third-party component. Let's have a look at plugin for Capvideo Toolkit. In the customer's application, Capvideo has no, no own installer, and its location on the and user's PC is definite by user on installation stage. So its location is not uh, definite in advance, which is essential for technical reasons. This fact influences the plugin's design. It was split into two parts, the loader and the core parts, to apply that requirement. So the way how end user application uses Capvideo is shown here. The included C3D Capvideo settings is needed not only to tune the plugin, but also for right PMI interpretation. I forgot to mention that uh, after the demo, the, our customers got new wishes which were related to PMI transform. And so we needed to change the API to replace a predefined constant to predefined strings so that extra strings for pre specific symbols could be transferred. So C3D on its side you obviously uses Win API function to work with plugin as, as, as a shared library. And the plugin, as mentioned before, has the loader and core parts, one to connect to C3D and the other to Capvidia. Another work which was done is support of OPSH format. This is a polygonal format for visualization. Some samples are shown here. A model with detailed visual properties and an assembly, unfortunately, without ones. Working on quality every year, we face these interesting cases. Some of them surprise us all so much that we present them on a conference. Here is a sort of important from step. It looks fine everywhere, even in the neighborhood of a defect. How can we see it? But if we change the rendering mode, we will see the incomplete faces built on same planes. We managed to localize these defects thanks to, thanks to our new testing system. Unlike previous, it not only estimates the mass and natural properties of models, but also uh, analyzes uh, if detailed uh, results of built-in diagnostics changes. In addition, it has it can permanently highlight uh, defective faces or edges so that the developers could focus on them. Our third plans mostly come from work of this year. But regardless of our vision of future, we're still open for your requests. We will continue working on improvement on flag plugin system. The first release was MPI, but now we found out what could be done better. And the experience we got from working this new testing system encouraged us to go this way further. And now we work in close contact with the DevOps team to run it automatically for each build. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, for your presentation. It is nice to see uh, how our city converter gets closer to support all, almost all formats. And now we are going to listen uh, to our colleague uh, who connects us to us from Italy. It's Marco Lagatelli, uh, communication and marketing specialist from Eagleware. Hello, everybody. I am Marco from Egalware, an Italian company, uh, a software house mostly dedicated to the development of CAD CAM solution to enable and improve the workflow of our customers. Our software manages machines from two to five axes with different manufacturer oriented for stone, wood, plastic, or metal. Our main goal is to develop a vast array of software dedicated to enhance the efficiency and quality of any plant, taking care to all the productivity process, starting from the raw materials throughout the creation of the project until the finished parts. Working in the most diverse production areas present the problem of having to manage many different file extensions and formats, especially when importing geometric elements into AGT CAM5, our CDCM core. C3D converter 
allows us to import and work with a wide range of file extension in a GTCAM file. In this way, we are able to interface with the main formats such as STEP and DIGES, used and generated by the most popular CAD software on the market. A great task for which we rely on the C3D library is the importing of the machine model in EGTCAM5. Starting from a step file, we can import the machine model and work on its part for further elaboration if needed, then export it as other formats. Once we have imported the machine in our EGTCAM5, we are able to simulate the movement of the parts during the machining allowing the operator to evaluate the processes before performing them on the machine, also signaling any anomaly in advance. And we can do this for any kind of manufacture and any kind of material to be worked on. Thank you for watching. Okay, I think it's worth asking Marco some questions uh, before we go to the next speaker. So uh, maybe I can ask you uh, how, uh, what uh, are your recent customers who are working, who are you working with now? Yeah, uh, our latest customers uh, are nearly all uh, involved in the heavy mechanic industry. So we, we can supply uh, our customers with uh, CAD and uh, CAM uh, products to work, uh, to, to prepare the working of the machines and to monitor the machine state of, the, of uh, all the plant. Um, we mainly operate in uh, two sectors. Uh, one, is uh, the one uh, I was told about, I was talking about, and is um, mainly uh, the CAD, CAM part. And the other uh, uh, important sector in uh, which we operate is uh, the Industry 4.0 thematic, uh, or um, to explain what is uh, Industry 4.0, is uh, um, the possibility to monitor and control all the machines of a given implant or a production plant um, from a centralized server. Uh, so in a big uh, industry uh, where uh, there are a lot of uh, machines working, uh, the operator can uh, monitor the state of all of them uh, directly from uh, his monitor, his tablet, his smartphone, or any smart device connected to internet. And um, this uh, uh, will be um, surely the, the future of the manufacturer, I think, because uh, it will mean uh, uh, more control with less uh, um, man work. And uh, this does not mean that uh, machines will take over the man work, but this means that uh, a lot of uh, hard work that traditionally was done by men now uh, can be done uh, via tablets, smartphone, and uh, other uh, useful uh, tools. Uh, thank you, Marco. And one more question. Could you please uh, tell us more about the impact of C3D Toolkit on your product development? Yeah. Where uh, C3D uh, helped helps us out really a lot because uh, when we are uh, movimenting or simulating the movement of uh, a machine that may be a new customer give us, um, usually it comes in a steep or I guess a format. And uh, uh, C3D really helps us out uh, in importing that file in that format under our uh, chem core. So, uh, with a C3D converter, we can uh, uh, very easily and uh, very, very in a very powerful way, we can import all, all the machine parts and all of the machine components under uh, our environment. So we can then uh, proceed to, uh, for example, uh, making the simulation of the workings or uh, um, create an, ex an uh, explode of the of the machine so we can analyze any part and uh, any component. 
And um, most important, we can uh, anticipate the movement of the machine for a given, for a given uh, program. Uh, so the operator can see them in advance. And uh, that operator can see if the, uh, the machining that is going to be done is good or it has some problem. And, um, and that uh, doing that in advance before uh, sending the program to the machine is uh, really a, a great help because uh, it uh, drastic, drastically reduces the problems that can uh, come during the machining because uh, the operator uh, already had the CVM uh, in advance. And uh, I think this is the, the greatest uh, point. <laughs> And we, uh, coming back uh, to C3D, we can do this thanks to C3D Converter because, uh, because we can import really uh, the, the, form, the five formats we need uh, with uh, no problem with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mar Marco, very much for joining our conference, for your participation. Uh, thank you. And now let's move to our next speaker. Uh, Dario Surko will tell us about uh, vision component. I'm gladly uh, inviting her. Dario, please come to the stage. Hello. <laughs> Hello colleagues, my name is Darian. I'm one of the developers of C3D Vision and I'd like to tell you about new features uh, of C3D Vision and also about it, its improved tools what were previously available. So, what is this C3D Vision? It is an open gel based engine for rendering polygonal models. For C3D Vision component is developed with uh, a real uh, user needs. C3D Vision renders a polygonal model uh, divided into segments and represented as a graph. Vision includes a lot of tools such as camera, control layers, uh, uh, camera layers, uh, camera controls, layers, plane sections, searching objects under the cursor, interactive manipulators, etc. Vision can work as a standalone component as well. It is deeply integrated with related components from the toolkit. So the first topic is math representations. To minimize the user's code, uh, we have improved the functionality of the scene generator. I want to remind uh, that the vision integration with the math kernel is implemented with two classes, math representation and math geometry. They operate directly with the math representation of MBI item. This greatly simplified development process for a user. In the diagram, you can see a sequ uh, sequence of creating a visual representation for rendering. On the slide, you can see the code fragment that allows you to render a math representation as well as the result of generating of math representation in vision. I think you noticed that code very laconic. Here, I'd like to note uh, what we keep improving uh, the generator of representation, so now it includes new geometric objects created. The next topic is geometry representations. We have improved a set of simple geometric objects that can be used in tools separately and together as well. Simple geometric objects are used in geometric tools and pointers such as sphere, cube, torus, cone, based on their own geometric data, no using map data. The standard set of required representation includes markers and icons. Vision uses different ways to render them. Uh, geometric icons based on uh, image of various format, PNG, BMP, ICO, etc. Symbolic icons XYZ as well as regularly used uh, ones such as diamonds, squares, uh, asterisks, etc. Standard markers to include uh, constraints, for example, parallelism, perpendicularity, point coincidence, tangency, etc. 
Uh, it is possible to create the user's representations uh, using the pointer tools. Pay attention to the slide on the left figure shows an example how to draw standard markers of coincident points, uh, perpendicularity, and parallelism. And uh, on the right uh, is an icon obtained using an image in PNG format. C3D Vision 2021 introduces a visual representation of tri trip coordinate system. Here are some, fu some functions provided to control the representation. Representation can be flat to volumetric, the ability to show or hide any axis or origin, the ability to, show, uh, uh, to set a color for each component, the ability to resize each component. It also provides selecting of any axis using the selection mechanism. Another new features are polygon representation and polygon geometry, designed to render an array of curves within a single geometry and provide a high performance rendering of, of a lot of curves. Polygon geometry has a number of functions that allows you to manipulate curves separately. They include dynamic creation of curves, hide or show of curves by ID, set and style for curves by ID, set and texture to curves by ID, set and the normal to cut off the drawing of curves. The library of geometric representations and representations with a lot of bodies has been expanded. Math group representation and math group geometry are designed to render a lot of bodies in a single geometry while providing high, uh, high rendering performance. Math group geometry has no hierarchical representation of its geometry. Math group geometry provides a number of helper functions that allow uh, you to manipulate objects in isolation, such as selection both uh, the body and its uh, primitives using the selection tool, uh, adding or removing any geometry or geometry array in real time. Uh, higher show geometry by uh, its ID, setting material to geometry by its ID, setting special material to render with a special mode while uh, preserving the native geometry material. The recent versions of Safety Division has a geometric representation for comments. Comment representation, comment geometry. We have uh, made uh, functional uh, improvements uh, so it became possible to add uh, any numbers of extension lines. On the presented slide, you can see the result of rendering a commentary geometry uh, with an arbitrary number of extension lines. The next topic is expanding opportunities for geometric objects. We have improved the capabilities of geometric objects. Next, I will tell you about uh, the most basic of them. Uh, screen plane only allows you to orient the position of the graph segment geometry in the screen plane. On the presented slide, you can see uh, the in-plane rendering mode for a circle, cylinder, and square. No scalable allows you to make the segment geometry non-scalable. On the presented slide, uh, you can see the result of applying the specific possibility for a circle, cylinder, and square. Uh, Double-sided lighting allows you to turn uh, on two-sided lighting of the segment geometry when overall two-sided lighting is off. On the slide, you can see the result of applying one-sided overall lighting to the scene square. Render mode allows you to set mode for an individual segment of geometry in the scene to render. So on the presented slide, uh, the cube and cylinder are rendered in wireframe mode, uh, while the general scene mode is shaded. Section planes allows to set section of selected segments by the plane. You can see here that the section um, by the plane is set only the part and ignores the cube. Phase scaling is necessary to optimize rendering of complex geometry. It allows rendering not the side faces, but those that are not visible to the user or vice versa, only those that are visible. 
This is defined by the flag uh, then creating the object in phase scaling. In the given example, uh, the front edges are not rendered. Render layer settings defines the geometry rendering mode setting for the scene, including the ability to customize the lighting of the layer. Uh, set the material to the layer, which will be applied uh, to all geometric objects of this layer. Set the uh, rendering mode for a specific layer, for example, shaded, wireframe, etc. Set in the layer number for a scene segment performs uh, uh, via the uh, set render layer function, which takes two parameters, the layer number and flag uh, that uh, flag that determines uh, the order in which the layer is distributed to child segments. On the presented slide, you can see the result of initializing the default layer and two additional layers. And now let's talk about improved tools. Find Select Area tool is a selection of geometric objects with a frame. It has been improved. Added a selection type setting for the process. Uh, unifying cutting is unifying and cutting frame. Cutting unifying is uh, cutting and unifying frame. Only unifying is only unifying frame, and only cutting is only cutting frame. Uh, material settings for drawing the frame uh, are separated for unifying and cutting frames. The slide shows the selection of objects using the unifying and cutting frames. Uh, process Camera Zoom Box uh, tool is also improved. It's process for zooming with a frame. The process has basic setting for activation and according to the configuration specified by the user, uh, while it, it can be performed many times. Uh, cutting tools uh, has been improved. Cutting tools uh, is a uh, dynamic section by the plane. Here on the left side, you can see the plane control with move manipulator. And on the right side, uh, with the rotation manipulator. Improved locators so would convert the coordinate values from the cursor position. Typically, locators are used for editing or manipulating processes. We have implemented the most commonly used locators, such as mod code locator uh, to convert coordinate values uh, to model uh, coordinates, surface screen code locator uh, convert coordinate values to the specific surface, and curve screen code locator converts uh, coordinate values into a specific curve. The slide shows the use of locators to recalculate coordinates in a custom application. Another serious area is the uh, implementation of interactive tools like manipulators. Uh, the base class of manipulators is called uh, scene widget. It's used both separately and as a part of object editing processes. It represented uh, a wrapper, including the processes to ensure its behavior and its representation on the screen. The picture shows scene widget structure and code fragment creating a simple manipulator of a hot point type. In scene widget for manipulators, we have provided and implemented standard behavior processes and their models. Now let's talk about the standard process and representations in scene widget. Hot point is a widget with a specific presentation and behavior. Uh, here you can see how hot point active manipulators work. Uh, each of them has its own representation model and each of manipulators has its own process uh, with its own specific behavior. Uh, on the left uh, of the screen, you can see the manipulator hot point with locator uh, to recalculate coordinates along a curve. At the right, with uh, locator to recalculate coordinates along a plane. And here we can see the use of active hot point manipulator modif uh, modifying the body. Move manipulators implement a move along the specific axis. 
on the left, you can see how the manipulator work with the size information, which shows uh, how far the manipulator has been moved. On the right, uh, the manipulator for moving in the direction of the axis. In the next slide, in the picture on the left, uh, we see uh, how use uh, of uh, shift manipulators in any direction uh, of the active axis. And on the right, a uh, rotation manipulator, what implemented uh, rotation around the axis. And finally, you can see our plans for the end of the year in terms of the most ambitious ideas on this slide. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Daria, for your presentation. It was nice to hear how many new features uh, were implemented in our visualization engine, City Division, during these two years. And a uh, special uh, case is uh, improving performance of our visualization engine using new representations. So now uh, the last speaker is a representative of our customer, Leaders, uh, Alexey Yushov, CEO of Leaders. Please connect her to us. Hello, my name is Alexey Yershov and I represent Leaders Company. Our company focused on development of engineering software. We have a very good and related experience and we think that we are the best team for your C3D based development. We started to work on engineering software market 20 years ago. And from the very beginning, we were working on global market. I mean, European countries, USA, and East Asia. Now there are 70 persons in our team. 50 of them are software developers and researchers. 10 of our guys have PhD degrees in computer science, mathematics, and engineering. And in total, we have more than 500 person years of experience in engineering software, namely computer aided design, including working with many CAD software pieces like AutoCAD, Inventor, Compass, CATIA, Rhinoceros 3D, SOLIDWORKS, DWG and Open Design Alliance libraries. It also computer aided manufacturing, uh, including cutting, welding, marking, engraving, and other processes, and additive manufacturing. Also, building informational modeling, including work with IFC format, Revit, Renga and point clouds. We also work in the area of digital medicine, which means we work with 3D meshes, 3D images, and voxels. And also, we have our experience with 3D cloud and web solutions. Let's talk a bit about our skills and experience. Uh, we have uh, knowledge uh, related to desktop and web applications, and we consider ourselves as full stack development team, uh, which uses uh, primarily C, C++ and .NET, but also Python and JavaScript, TypeScript languages. Uh, we know uh, C3D kernels from inside because we have experience of development of 3D kernels. And in total, we have more than 20 person years of R&D in this area. And three, five person years from this 
tool is development inside C3D. Also, we have great experience in development, in development on the basis of 3D kernels. On top of 3D kernels, more than 100 person years uh, for all 3D kernels like Parasolid, ACES, C3D, Open Cascade, and 50 person years of development on top of C3D. Uh, we have uh, very famous uh, customers like Dassault System. I should say that uh, part of the code that we developed together with Dassault System during uh, the very long-term project uh, was integrated in CATIA modeler and now is available to the customers of CATIA. Uh, we have a, a long story of development for ASCON and uh, Simatron, which is computer-aided manufacturing company. Also Brixis, uh, which is considered as one of the uh, most important competitors of Autodesk. And also Jetcam, a computer-aided manufacturing company. Just a couple of examples of our work on top of C3D. Uh, we implemented uh, parametric contours in Renga BIM software. This is one of the most important uh, building informational modeling uh, software on the market. And LIDAS was engaged in uh, 2D parameterization on sketches. Uh, using our competence in 3D modeling with C3D toolkit and in the field of geometric constraint solving. I should say that LIDAS is one of the uh, most recognizable companies in geometric constraint solving because our LIDAS geometric solver uh, was on the second place on the market of geometric constraint solvers for many years. Also, uh, we have fulfilled Web2D Sketcher on top of C3D solver. The customer was a US-based company, and our work was to make a Web Sketcher with constraint solving capabilities. C3D Labs provided us by C3D solver ported to JavaScript. And our team developed online application with solving directly in the browser. Also, I would like to note Lidas Cloud Platform or LCP. In case you need to develop your C3D web application fast, you may consider using Lidas Cloud Platform. It provides visualization and navigation of 3D models in the browser with multi-user, multi-role environment and collaboration capabilities. It is very good scalable thanks to dispatching user requests and efficient data storage. Any complicated computations with C3D model could be done on the server side. LIDAS Cloud Platform is based on WebGL, Python, Django, and TypeScript. So in general, if you need a team for your C3D-based product, maybe desktop or web application, you may consider LIDAS. We have a very, very good experience in computer-aided design, building informational modeling, computer-aided manufacturing, and digital medicine. Please visit our site, www.ledas.com, and uh, know more about our experience and expertise. Lidas is your best choice for C3D-based development. Thank you. Alexei, thank you for, so much for your speech. 
And uh, now we all know uh, if you need any help with your product development based on C3D toolkit, you know you can contact leaders. Well, <clears throat> dear participants, uh, now we have such uh, sad news. Uh, our conference is going to be completed. But uh, don't uh, turn off, because uh, now it's uh, time for our un question answer session. And now we are going to uh, read uh, more interesting questions that you uh, write in our comments. And uh, I will uh, read the answer for each question. So, Katia, let's, so start. let's begin, yes. Our first question about web vision. What is the approximate performance of the web vision compared to the native C3D vision? So the answer is uh, web vision doesn't have the full functionality of the desktop vision. Currently, performance in 10, 15 person show slower when compared on the same devices. Okay. The next one question regarding C3D modeler. What, what are plans and priorities for 2022? Thanks. The answer, surface modeling and improvements on the base on your requests. Good question. <laughs> good, <laughs> good answer. The question um, is good answer. <laughs> um, and uh, about solver, what are your next plans for 2D and 3D solvers in 2022? I guess from the same person. <laughs> yeah, the answer is so long. In the near future, we plan to implement all the functionality of equidistant curves. In the coming months, we plan to implement interval dimensions, the dimension that varies within the user-defined interval. During the year, we plan to implement functionality that allows you to impose automatic constraints in a, a 2D solver. We are also planning to improve the analysis of degrees of freedom in a 2D solver. Now uh, the question is over. Uh, yeah. So uh, now we... I want to show you how many of us in the studio now, and uh, we'll wave our you hand can see us. and say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, thank you for participation. Uh, see you soon. And please write to us if you have any questions. <laughs>